Three trails and two dead ends. The poor nephew is dead, but Baines has the bishop's murderers. The only one left is the rat killer. Have you questioned him? No. May I ask when you're going to do it? When I have found him. What? You're not trying to tell me that he's escaped again? Yes, but this time it's not your fault, nor mine for that matter. You've been using me, Holmes. I unwittingly aided one of the most dangerous criminals in the kingdom to escape. So please tell me why. An explanation would be futile. It would only lead to further pointless questions. But do you have even the slightest notion as to where he might be hiding? Forget Hans Schielman for the moment, Watson. Just concentrate on the fact that the bishop is on the chessboard. In any case, the news has spread like wildfire. Look at the headlines. All the papers are talking about it. And the Globe Explorer, their editors must be jumping for joy. Let the dogs bark with the pack, Watson. But how could Farley be so well informed? Look, he also mentions our visit to the opium den. And in great detail. How did he know? Let me see. Contrary to what you might think, Watson, I do not consider that all of our trails have led to dead ends. We're simply missing a common denominator, something that links them together. And our journalist's mystery informer might just be that missing link. Should we attempt to uncover his identity? It is essential that we do so. Let us examine the map. We must talk to Mr. Farley. All right, welcome back, gamers. I'm Shot, and this is my guide, my walkthrough for wikigameguides.com. All right, so we could go ahead and read the new material that you just got, and then uh, head on to your next des destination, which is Farley's office, the reporter. Here we are at Farley's office. One cannot say that ethics play a very large role in his life. Look at the headlines pinned to the walls, like trophies of bad taste. Perhaps we will finally begin to understand the reasons for his persistence in tarnishing your reputation. Perhaps. Yeah, you can have a look around. Coffee! It's still hot. the way we came in. Alright, let's take a look at uh, Farley's uh, coat. I'm going to do a little unauthorized searching. Cigarettes, an ordinary, inexpensive brand. Alright, then let's look inside the inner pocket. A press card. Osmond Farley. It's his overcoat. Right, that's all we can do for now. This door is locked. Is Farley afraid of being interrupted suddenly? I must go out for a while, Miss Jean. I won't be long. Ask my appointments to wait, and send this message as a matter of urgency. Mr. Osmond Farley, I presume? Messrs. Holmes and Watson. What a surprise. What is there so surprising about being visited by the targets of your slander? I never slander. I inform. You will have to accept the consequences of these articles, Mr. Farley. Those words sound like a threat, Mr. Holmes. I never threaten. I merely warn. You don't frighten me, Mr. Holmes. I know all of your little secrets. And soon all of London will find out what really hides behind the facade of the impeccable detective. Thanks to my work, the whole world will discover the true Sherlock Holmes. Gentlemen. I don't wish you a good day. Jerk. What a bore! Even to the point of refusing to shake our hands. Which means that we can avoid having to wash them. Did you notice the crumbs on his jacket? He had just finished eating and his hands will be covered in grease, the same as his mouth. Slovenly habits. That's quite disgusting, Holmes. Do not be deceived, Watson. The workmanship in those tailor-made clothes indicate that he is a man who takes pride in his appearance. If Farley has left without brushing off his jacket or washing his hands, then it is because he spotted our approach and wished to avoid us at all costs. But why? We will find out by searching his office. 
the secretary will stop you. Please reassure me, Holmes, you don't intend upon knocking her out? Only if we exhaust every other viable alternative. All right, let's have a look. The secretary is occupied in sending a telegram via their electric telegraph. Farley asked that she should do so before he left. We must find a way of interrupting the transmission, which will oblige her to go to the telegraph office in Kensington. It will take her some time to get there, and if we add on the time it takes to send the telegram and then return here, we should have ample time to search the office without being disturbed. I suppose it's unnecessary to point out the illegality of this search? I'm afraid so. All right, so uh, let's disrupt electricity by going to the control box right there. But first, uh, we're going to need this coat hanger to pry it open. This hanger has a large iron hook. There we go. There we go, loading time right there. I can hear an electrical humming. The secretary is using the electricity supplied by this switch. Let us see if I can cause a short circuit. All right, so the goal is to connect all three of these um, points. All right, so. So it can only go the this way anyway. And let's do it. Pull the lever. There we are. It is simplicity itself. Oh, that's just too bad. Get out quickly, Watson. I'm going to hide here. The way is clear. That was a hell of a risk hiding behind the door like that. Well, anyways, let's go on iron in. Let's go, Watson. Right, just go ahead and start investigating. The ribbon is missing from this machine. All right. A page of this notebook has been torn out. We can only see the title in shorthand and today's date. It's a message that the secretary must send urgently. I'm going to recopy it. You can read shorthand. You never cease to amaze me. Were you a secretary before becoming the great Sher? Perhaps, perhaps. But no, a man must have his secrets. All right, got that note kept now. Keep looking. Someone has written something on a sheet of paper. There are traces of it remaining. All right, we'll have the magnifying glass. I can make out the marks, but I need something to bring them to light. All right, so back out. Okay, and grab the brush. A makeup case with a good brush. She can't do anything right now, so go ahead and uh, continue investigating other places. So like this trash can. The secretary has just changed the typewriter ribbon. There are smudges of dark blue ink. Right. Make a look at this, but... Here is Farley's secretary's telegram. Nothing special here. Yeah, nothing special. All right, so keep looking. The key is still in the lock. Right. And of course, game bugged out, auto walking for some reason. This book has fallen down from the shelf. The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. My word, it's my stories about your investigations. A real investigative reporter must have read them, my dear Watson. <laughs> okay, something you do now, that 
look up here. My adventures have fallen from this shelf. Okay. Right. Uh, go ahead and check the fireplace. So you found part of a note. Go ahead and read that. This paper only just escaped the flames. But who is this note about? And who wrote it? I will deal with it later. Just keep going and keep looking. Someone closed the curtain as though he wanted to maintain his privacy. Right. Go to the telephone. Grab those keys. A bunch of keys. A telephone. A technological marvel. A number was written next to it quite recently. A fine, educated hand. Holmes, this number seems very familiar. Yes, but let us dial it to be sure. Right. Miss, get me 1313, please. It is Scotland Yard, of course. I'm beginning to understand. Lucky you. Go ahead and uh, look in the uh, file cabinet. This cabinet has a lot of drawers, each marked with a letter. There is surely a great deal of information in them. But we can't open all of them. We must know what we are looking for. Yep. So you can't uh, do anything right now with that. So go ahead and head to the bulletin board. Judging from all the notes on the board, our reporter is an assiduous and organized worker. All right, go ahead and grab the points of interest. Go ahead and read that. I've already read it. A horrible story, and rather a strange one. This one too. I read it. Here's what is strange. An attack of collective insanity. Okay. A, prince, a picture of the Prince Woodville for some reason. A photograph of Prince Woodville. Farley is evidently also interested in this affair. I think that is everything. All right, go ahead and look on his desk. Our man left his sandwich unfinished. Look at that chair. This armchair is out of place. And the ashtray. This ashtray is worth examining. This ash comes from an ordinary, well-known brand of cigarettes. It is still warm. This cigar is of a fine quality. It must be very expensive and difficult to obtain. And it is not even finished. What a waste. <laughs> okay, that's all you can do for now. This ash. This ashtray is worth examining. Okay, so I am missing something. What is it? The cigar end. Farley was there not alone when we arrived at his secretary's office. You are thinking of the owner of the cigar. Yes, the reporter smokes ordinary cigarettes. Can you smell the subtle scent of gingerbread? That is the characteristic odor of a Habano Clarissimo. Our mysterious visitor is a rich man, Watson. This category of Havanas is exorbitant, and I cannot imagine a cigar lover crushing out such a marvelous smoke before finishing it. Since we saw no one leaving the building, that must point to a secret exit somewhere. How are we going to find it? By retracing Farley's steps from the moment before we arrived. Look, this room is teeming with clues. All right. All right, so now uh, you have a little uh, deduction here now. So you want to find the order of the positioning uh, that Farley and his uh, guest moved around in. Right, so let's see. So, um, actually, let's complete the clues first before we do this. Okay. Okay, so now that you have the ash from the ashtray, 
go ahead and back to the secretary's desk. To the brush. Okay, we're gonna do this old trick. I understand what you want to do. It's an old trick. And then brush it away. I can see what has been written. Please write it down. Very well, Holmes. All right, so look at that. Prepare elements by D through F. So that's actually the file cabinet. So let's go back out. This is the file cabinet. I wonder which drawer the secretary was interested in. D through F, right there. No, I can't do that. Oh. Pull out the keys that you picked up on the next to the telephone. The DF drawer, of course. The one in the message that we deciphered from the secretary's desk blotter. There are a lot of cards. How to find the right one? All right, so if you remember the uh, typewriter ink ribbon, so look for the f fingerprints that the secretary probably left on here. Okay, so it's actually really simple. It's actually the one right there. These blue stains come from an old typewriter ribbon. This card has been removed recently. All right, here it is. Go ahead and read it. This card has got grease marks on it. The reporter made them. Apparently, he's making inquiries about Prince Woodville, too. But where do you come into all this? Look, if we pull the curtain a little, we can see out into the street. All right, so with that known, let's fill up the deduction board. All right, so starting from here, so you get these six options that you could place onto uh, figure out from at each position. So these are the six op uh, options for just location. So assuming we start from here, James looked out the window and saw Holmes. And what happened next? He just smoked a cigar and a cigarette at the same time. Unlikely, so. That number two doesn't make sense. Let's go to the chair. Chairs pushed the armchair when he ran. That sounds makes more sense. Right, so number three cigar has been here for a long time. Maybe. Maybe he closed the door. He just closed the door and left the key in the lock. Yep. Number three. Number four. The visitor smoked a cigar and sat opposite to the journalist. That part's true. Right. The, the journalist accidentally dropped a book from the bookcase. Number five right there. Right. So this will tell you like if it's correct or not. And lastly, number six, Georgia threw away the paper into the fire without making sure that it burnt entirely. Yes. Looks right. Farley consulted a card while he ate, which was given to him by his secretary just before she changed the ribbon on her typewriter. The reporter's greasy fingerprints are all over the card. When he went to file it away, he glanced automatically out of the window and saw us in the street. He closed the filing cabinet and rushed to lock his office door. In his haste, he pushed his chair aside, but didn't think to return it to its place. Precisely. He then hurried to tell his visitor of our arrival and showed him the way out. He then threw a piece of paper into the fireplace. But we still don't know how the cigar-smoking visitor departed. The answer lies in the direction the reporter took, Watson. At a certain moment, he would have been in a place where he had no logical reason to be. Look at our deduction board, and then let us go to the place where the reporter should not be. All right, let's go back to the deduction board, as he said. So out of these six places, where are the places that the journalists shouldn't be? Right here, so... Uh, I'll give you the answer, but I'll, I'll try to justify it. So, the uh, it, it's it's the book. You're like no reason if it, it would it would fall off like that. I mean, it's uh it's built into the wall. It's uh should uh, assuming that it was uh, all the way put shelved unless it was pulled out, but trying to put them back without in haste that it fell off the shelf. So let's try that. Perfect. Plus, you know, uh, 
doesn't like Sherlock, so why would he uh, have his book out like that? Irony, I guess. All right, so head on to the bookshelf. Book. Yes, Watson. In his haste, Farley dropped this book, taking it from the shelf. Let's search this place. There's a control here. box built into the filing cabinet. This box must open the secret door. We don't know the combination, Holmes. The answer is perhaps within the question, my dear fellow. All right, so this one's really simple. So six of them are already solved, 4D. So then plus six right here. So plus six on every time you go here, which means, uh, oh, so four and D. D is the fourth position of the al in the alphabet. So uh, then you add six onto the four, ten, and then what is the tenth uh, letter in the alphabet? So it would be J. All right, add six onto ten, be sixteen. P. All right, that should be it. And pull the lever. There we are. It is simplicity itself. Let us go and look at this secret exit, Watson. All right. Chance has smiled upon us, Watson. This hat was almost certainly abandoned by our mysterious visitor. Imagine the scene. In his hurry, the cigar man drops his top hat. The door closes. The hat is caught beneath it. Fearing above all that he should be discovered, he does not attempt to retrieve it, instead preferring to flee. Who would take such action to avoid meeting us? I cannot tell as yet, but it is certain that he carries the advantage of knowing us. We must discover his identity in order to redress the balance, and this hat will help us. Let us return to Baker Street. All right, on to Baker Street. Let's hope that an examination of this top hat will reveal to us the identity of its owner. It will, you can be sure of that. For once, I must insist that you allow me to work alone, Holmes. As you wish. Take your time. I will examine this hat at my work table. Alright. So go ahead and pull out the hat. Alright, let's start examining it. This hat is of an exceptional quality. The man who owned it is wealthy. Let's take a look at it. Someone has changed the ribbon for another, more modern one, which shows a certain taste for current fashions. Not a mistress, but someone who pays attention to details. This man is married. All right. So. All right, for some reason, the magnifying glass shows up on the outside of the hat on objects that are, are in the inside, so it's a little bit of a bug there, but you know, that's quite alright, so um, the ribbon is all you needed to look at for the outside part, so let's flip it over, and look right here. Heat marks, and a strong smell of tobacco, a cigar smoker, which confirms that this hat belongs to the reporter's visitor. All right, look at these imprints. Slight scratch marks. Probably where it's made. This hat was made to measure by a well-known hatter located near the old Bailey. And we got some hair. His hair is graying, and judging by the odor, he puts camphor on it. He is probably in his early fifties. Slight scratch marks. The man wears glasses, and whenever he puts them on, I now have an excellent description of the man that I am looking for. The journalist's mysterious visitor is in a profession highly placed on the social scale. He is rich and married. He must have called Scotland Yard in Farley's presence. 
He frequents the law courts from which he makes his purchases. This man is a judge. Let us look through my files to see if I can identify this judge. I have a memoir on the most influential judges. Well, I wouldn't figure that out. Well, then again, I'm not from the 1800s, 1800 judges. All right, so uh, here's the book right here. I have found my file. I must place it on my work table. All right, head back to the table. All right, so there are three judges right here, and your goal is to uh, check off uh, what you see right here from the pictures. All right, so this guy does. This guy wear a hat. Looking for a hat. No hat. Uh, smokes a cigar. Yes, he does. Go ahead and check that off. Wears glasses. Yes, he does. Uh, married, has a ring on his left hand. Uh, ring finger. Gray hair. No, that looks black to me, so I'm going to leave that out. Alright, to the next person. This guy wears a hat, definitely. Glasses, glasses. Oh, right there, glasses. A cigar, yes he does. Married, yes he is. Gray hair. He does have gray hair. He's speaking the gray. All right. So this guy has all of them, but you gotta rule out the third one too. So, where's a hat? Definitely. Right there, there's a hat. Glasses. Cigar. He doesn't smoke. Married? Yes, he is. Gray hair. Yeah, he has some gray hair right there. Right. It is him, Judge Beckett. Have you discovered the Top Hat secrets, Holmes? Watson, this hat belongs to Sir Coots Beckett, a judge of the court at the Palace of Justice in London. A judge? Wait, did you say Sir Beckett? That name rings a bell. Uh, yes, that's it. What an extraordinary coincidence. Holmes, I was reading something about him in the Globe Explorer only this morning. Decidedly, this Beckett seems to have solid ties with the gutter press. I bought it from a rascal who ran off without giving me my change. <laughs> I'm sure that I've seen him before, and... Spare me the details, Watson. Show me the article. All right, we go and read that. I've already read it. So, Lady Beckett is on holiday in Portsmouth. That means her husband is at home alone. Good. We shall pay a courtesy call, Watson. With a little luck, we shall leave with a few Habanos Clarissimo. That you should interest a judge of the High Court isn't surprising. You have solved so many criminal affairs that there are a thousand reasons why a magistrate should be interested in you. But why should this one feel the need to act in shadows? It's true that it's surprising. Perhaps he simply wishes to avoid being seen in the company of this Farley fellow. Mr. Kirby, our local postman, owes me a favor. He'll give me Beckett's address. At this hour, he should still be at the post office. I'll go there, Holmes. Good, Watson, but be quick about it. While you're gone, I'll make preparations for our visit. Sir Coots Beckett, I've got the address. We can go round after a nice cup of tea. Don't get too comfortable, Watson. We're leaving immediately. All right, before we head off, there's Toby right there. Better. Thank him. Such a good dog. You have been a great help, dear Toby. I'll ask Mrs. Hudson to send you up some fine giblets. Ah. All right. So, go ahead and choose Judge Beckett, and I'll see you in the next video.